The Sex and the City reboot and just like that. Hit Earth by way of HBO Max on Thursday morning. Like the asteroids in Don't Look Up and with potentially similar results, a quick glance through early reviews raised the specter of a franchise extinction event. Still, critics are not the audience, SAC fans are the audience. And no doubt there are millions of viewers who long to know what Carrie Bradshaw, Sarah Jessica Parker, Miranda Hobbs, Cynthia Nixon, Charlotte York, Kristen Davis, and Samantha Jones, Kim Draw, are up to as they sashay through their six, and seven, decade. As every true fan knows, Kitral declined to be part of the resurrection process, and reading the subtext of the on-screen explanation for what has become a very famous off-screen estrangement between Kitral and Parker is indeed a highlight of the pilot. Samantha, we are told, has gone to London after, we later discover, Carrie fired her as her publicist. Not surprisingly, Samantha is not responding to Carrie's texts, everyone else is present and accounted for, however, including the late, great Willie Garson, who died as the series was being shot. So if nothing else, and just like that, as Garson's final performance. It also has TV's first death by Pelotone, taking Carrie's beloved Mr. Big, Chris Noth, in the process. Does it have anything else to recommend it? Staff writer Meredith Bleak and culture critic Mary McNamara have differing opinions. Mary McNamara, it is impossible for me to overstate how awful I think the first episode is, and the second episode comes in a close, well, second. So awful I was screaming. So awful I was fast forwarding through the most cringeworthy bits and then having to double back in the vain hope they were not as cringeworthy as I thought they were going to be. Where to start? With a lunch during which Miranda talks about podcasts like she is 150 years old and Charlotte tells her to dye her hair? With Carrie and Mr. Big smooching over red wine, while Carrie salts the fish and Big rhapsodizes Todd Rundgren? I could have lived my entire life without hearing Chris Noth sing along to Hello It's Me, just as I could have lived my life without seeing Big Masturbate, a scene over which I will draw a veil, maybe when Charlotte tries to force her skater kid daughter into a frilly designer dress or when Miranda acts like having a young black female law professor in braids is something remarkable. I understand that creator Michael Patrick Keane is trying to atone for the extremely white cis straight nature of the original show, but does he have to make his main characters behave like absolute morons? Charlotte has never been the edgiest tool in the box, but I know she reads Vogue, where style can mean pants. 